the school board meeting on August 24th to order. Um, I would like to mention that um, David Hillman is not in attendance tonight um, due to uh, family uh, emergency, and um, we hope that everything turns out okay. Um, Alan, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Um, I really don't have adjustments except for this. If a kind of where you got your agenda, I think if you took it off the website, there have been a couple of additions made to it. Uh, so I'll go over those very quickly. Before I do that, though, I'd like to thank Jason for being here. It suddenly dawned on me that this is a business meeting, and I always film business meetings because that's how uh, Andrea does our minutes. And God bless uh, Jason. Last Thursday, he said, yes, I'll be there. So uh, I thank him very much for doing that. If you look at your agendas, uh, on uh, the front page and the number four communications, where it says A is staff resignations, uh, two have been added to it, and again, according to where you got your agenda, you may have them or may not, but B should be student social security number collection, and C is federal legislation and teacher pay. Okay? Then on page, the second page, you have uh, the long list of new business uh, uh, consideration of action to, for extracurricular, et cetera. Under B, where it says district, and you have Mary Dulac and Kathleen Walsh, et cetera, Wendy Durkowitz should be added to that as webmaster. Uh, that slipped by us, and so I just want to be sure you have that on the agenda. And then on the next page, uh, where it starts at the top with Scott Shea for Health PE de Department Chair and Andrea Kerr, et cetera, if you have that. At the end of that list, you have Lisa Melanson is the last person on it, but you should add to it Michael Efron, who is Science Department Chair half-time, and Doug Worthley, who is Science Department Chair half-time also. So those were additions. And then, I just need to go back and remember what number I'm on. Uh, five. The F, if it has not, it is not on your, the one you, last one you picked up. The F is consideration to hear the superintendent regarding his retirement plan and initiate the action required by the school board. So that should also be on there, but it may not have been on the one if you took it off uh, the website uh, Friday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So this is an update uh, as of uh, yesterday. So those are, uh, Rebecca, those are the only changes that I have at this okay. point in time. Thank you, Alan. <clears throat> okay, well, I'm going to be working off two different <laughs> agendas, so bear with me if I, and, and, and let me know if I confuse something. Um, okay, so next is uh, approval of a significant number of um, school board minutes. The first being um, the meeting Tuesday, June 8th, 2010. Do I have a motion? I so move that we accept the minutes. Thank you, Mary. June 2010. Is there a second? Second. John, thank you. Comments, discussions, corrections, additions? Okay. All those in favor? 6 0. Okay, the next is Friday, June 11, 2010. Do you have a motion? Motion to approve the minutes from Friday, June 11th. Thank you, John. Is there a second? Second. Kathy, thank you. Corrections, discussion? All those in favor? 6-0. Minutes from Monday, June 14th, 2010. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the minutes from Monday, June 14th. Thank you, John. Second? I second. Kate, thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? 6 0. Uh, minutes for meeting on Thursday, July 8th, 2010. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the minutes from Thursday, July 8th. Thank you, John. Is there a second? I second. Kate, any discussion? All those in favor? 6 0. And then last. August 3rd, 2010, do I have a motion? Motion to approve the minutes from Tuesday, August 3rd. Second? I second. Kate, thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? 6-0.
Great. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, comments from the public on agenda items? Okay. Thank you. All right, Alan, under communications. Yes. Uh, the first part of the communications is staff resignations. You have two before you in your packet. Uh, the first one is dated July 28, 2010. It's from Trish Wilkins. Uh, Trish is writing to let you know after long consideration and thought, my husband and I have made a decision for me to step down from my job in Cape Elizabeth to care for our two, two children. It was a very hard decision to make as I have truly enjoyed working as a team in the Cape Elizabeth schools. It was a position I really enjoyed coming to and being with a family of co-workers and assisting wonderful children. I hope for such a position to open again in the future once I have nurtured my own children off to school. Uh, so you know this is an ed tap, so you don't have to vote on this. This is uh, just information for you, so you are aware of that. The second one is from uh, Thomas Doyle, and it's, I am ready to submit my letter of resignation. It's an ed tap three, uh, position in the choices room. I greatly appreciate working with the students and teachers involved in the program. The family obligations will prevent me from returning next year. I hope to work with the Cape Elizabeth School District in the future, and I appreciate everything you have done. Again, an attack. Are there two more, did you say? Uh, uh, no, those are the only two okay. that I have. Yeah. Okay, great. As far as staff goes. Okay. The, ne the next piece is about Social Security numbers collection. If you've been watching the newspaper, you know this has been a fairly hot item in the newspaper. Uh, what, is, what we are doing right now, uh, uh, Andrew put in the newspaper article that you may have seen, and one of the things that it does talk about is to make sure we inform parents that we, uh, they do not have to turn in their Social Security numbers. What I have done, uh, again, as uh, president of the Cumberland County Superintendents Association, I was in contact with Maine School Management, and they are working with Drummond Woodson to come up with a plan for this uh, so that each of us in Cumberland County can do that. I, am in, I will be meeting with my school management tomorrow and will probably get the work that they have done so that I can follow through on that at that point in time. But it is very important that we make clear to parents they do not have to turn that, that information in. Uh, if you've read the articles at all, you do know there is a plan through the Department of Education in order to be able to follow students uh, on the long run from kindergarten through to, to they are working after they have graduated from college. Uh, that is not a bad plan, but I personally will say to you as superintendent, I am very much in, not in favor of asking children for Social Security numbers because I think we all know, no matter how much they talk about the safety of maintaining those numbers, we have read enough in the newspapers recently about numbers that have been released by companies, etc. I do know that there are some systems across the state where the school boards are taking action and refusing to do this altogether. However, I am I'm very anxious to hear what I will hear from Maine School Management, and I think probably the best way to do this at this point is to put out the letter informing parents why it's being done, but also making it very clear that they do not have to turn in those numbers. And so, again, I hopefully will get that final answer tomorrow, and the way I think I'll do it is send it on to you as a, as a board update once I have heard from them. Um, just for clarification, I don't believe mm -hmm. that the board's the districts are refusing because um, they can't. The, the state law requires that they do it, um, that they issue mm -hmm. the letter asking. Um, but what, they're, what, what they've done is issued resolutions, in, right. resolutions encouraging families not to provide the information. Yep. Um, and I'll, I, I believe that that's as a result of some communication from the Maine Civil Liber Unity, um, Liberties Union, which I just discovered I received in letter from um, in the end of July and they do include a resolution um, okay, some, some language mm -hmm. right so I apologize to everyone it's summer um, I, my question to you Alan mm -hmm. is what is the, the, the deadline for districts to provide this information to the state what, what you keep hearing from the state is that we should be putting that out in our opening letters to the parents right. and then but they haven't given us a final deadline to get that information in okay. and so I think that's why they're working with Drummond Woodson uh, to be sure that we all have the same consistent message uh, I've heard from almost every one of the Cumberland County superintendents and they've all put their plans on hold until they get an answer back from me through main school management. 
And so, so, my, so to go back to your question, Rebecca, I don't know what the final date is when that has to be in. So it appears that we have some time yes. then. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that was my concern. I wanted to yeah. be sure that I had some time and that I wasn't stalling Cumberland County Superintendents. And they, they, were, they were very clear at Main School Management that we had the time to deal with that. So. Do, do you expect that, um, that your advice that, there, that it's not a requirement to provide the information will go out with the request for the information? Yes. So that parents will have it. It has to be in it. I, the way that's written, we have to put into it. And they, uh, the uh, newspaper talked about it from the perspective of it has to be right in the headline that we are requesting this information, but you do not have to reply, and you also put it within the body of the letter. So what I have in my office right now is a letter that is put together that shows how they'll be using it, but then within that letter, it will talk about the fact they don't have to turn that in. The other piece that I'm concerned about as we do this, if we were required to do this and everyone was doing it, is how you manage all this record keeping. Yeah. I mean, we're a pretty small system yeah. in, in comparison to Portland and South Portland and some of those places. So we are, so my sense is, and I could be dead wrong on this, but my sense is that you'll probably have a majority of parents who choose not to do it. And uh, I remember one of the ads on TV about it showed a woman whose uh, son is two years old and he got a request to file for uh, credit cards because his number was out there. That was from some other state, I think. Yeah. But it was giving that information. So, yeah. so my sense is, is that you will probably, you probably will not have a lot of people who will want to have those numbers recorded at this point in time. I will make a copy of this letter and um, have them in your mailboxes for you to look at. And uh, perhaps everyone can think about whether or not we want to also do something similar or not. And we meet again on, uh, on September 8th. Yeah. So it is pretty fast turnaround to our next regular board meeting. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on that? The second piece that I put on here is also another one that you probably saw in the newspaper the other day. It was on the editorial page. And <laughs> that is about finances. Uh, it's called Federal School Aid Gives Districts Some Options, was the article in the paper. And what it talks about is that the, they have passed legislation where money will be made available for us. But it's, it's going to be an interesting process in that the state cannot refuse a request, but it's a request to use that money to finance something as far as a position goes in the system. But as the newspaper warned us, you can only do it once because it could be the next year there's no money there to do this. Uh, this is another issue of taking to Maine School Management because I think they need to be much clearer. We have not received any of the uh, application forms yet, but uh, we need to understand clearly how that will be used. And I need to take a look with you at how that money will be used because, again, it looks like it is something where you will fund some kind of staffing for one year based on this. And the other piece I just talked, as a matter of fact, with uh, May School Management today and asked the question, well, how much would Cape Elizabeth get? And they don't know that answer yet, whether we would get $5,000 or $10,000 or $25,000. And so they are in the process of tr trying to get that. And their answer, my question went through DOE and back around, and the answer was that the DOE doesn't have that final information on how that will be distributed. So again, I look at both of these as, as information pieces for you right now. And as I gather more information, I will send that material on to you so you can take a look at it because I will have to come back to you as a board to make a final decision on that. Uh, Alan, yes. is this the same um, federal <coughs> act that they were, were talking about that's going to be distributed through the funding formula? No. This is additional. This is a different one. Oh. Yeah, yeah, this is a different one. And it's, it was interesting. Is it, I'm sorry. No, no good. Okay. So now there's three, because the first was there, it was the Medicaid, which the state had banked into its budget. Um, and if the feds did not approve it, we would have had for sure a curtailment. Curtailment, right. Which that passed, and so we're not going to be facing mm -hmm. that. Then there was some federal legislation around education funding, right. which the state has said will be distributed through the funding formula. And they've advised and their advice was put it in your contingency because yep. next year you're in really You'll big trouble. And now this is a third? This is the third one. 
And how much money was his? See, I don't know. I was just looking as you started to say that because I, I thought you were going to ask me that question. I don't see a final amount in this article. And we have to receive nothing officially from Maine School Management or federal government on it at this point in time. When was this article? This was dated August 19th. And it was it was on the editorial page of the Press Herald. It was last week. Yeah. yeah. August 19th. Yeah. I sent it to all of the administrators uh, so they can take a look at it and give some thought to it at this point in time as well. OK, thank you. OK. I believe that's all for communication? Yes, it is. OK, under new business. OK. Uh, consideration to approve the following personnel nominations. Um, Alan, do you want to speak? Well, I, I will throw that out to you. I know we've often discussed this. As you look at the next two pages, we have a fairly long list of people. Uh, the first set of these are our teachers who have been hired this summer uh, based on what your direction you gave to me was that during the summer I was allowed to interview the teachers and make decisions on them and also do contracts. Uh, what Andrew has put in here uh, that you received are kind of the summaries of each person, who they are, what they are, and what their resumes are. I would say to you right up, right up front, we got some amazing, amazing teachers. I was just, I've interviewed every single one of them, and I was just blown away by the types of people we did find. But my question comes down to, I think to the board, do you want to do them individually? Do you want me just to read the list? Uh, are there specific questions you have? I read them in there, with that however you want to do it. Okay. I would suggest that yep. in the motion, somebody just say, as presented by the superintendent. Okay. Not really, you don't really need to go through yep. the whole list. So um, is there a motion? A motion to approve the personnel nom nominations presented by the superintendent. Second. Thank you, Linda. Any discussion, questions? Okay, all those in favor? 6-0. Next is consideration to approve the following extra and co-curricular staff positions. Uh, very long list, very long list. Uh, you do have the breakdown charts, all of them in your packets as well, that have come from the, from the different buildings. Uh, I did tell you that Wendy Derkowitz should be added under the district one. Uh, you have the middle school nominations. You also have the Pond Cove nominations, and you have the high school nominations uh, in this packet. And so uh, those, there again, it's a fairly long list. Just for the public to understand, these are items based on the first one under districts of certification committee. I should mention in that one, we did receive from Mary today a longer list, but I wouldn't, I didn't put it on here. So I will bring another one on the eighth that will complete all of those because if you look at the number of new teachers, you'll have to have several, quite a few mentors for them. Uh, under the middle school, they are it's positions like chorus, uh, chorus uh, five six, chorus seven eight, drama, etc. You find the same thing under Pond Cove. Pond Cove is mainly the teacher leaders and also their student support team. And under the high school, again, you have a list of those people. <coughs> Uh, who have been nominated for several different positions. Uh, the, again, we have the factor sheet, which shows you the school, the number of hours, the rates, et cetera, how they're funded, and whether they're new positions or not. And so again, I'd be happy to go over them, any of them that you would like to go over, or uh, however you would like to do that. Can we first have a motion, please? Move that we approve the uh, following extra and co-curricular staff nominations including all district, middle school, Pong Cove, and high school. Second. Thank you. Second. Okay. Thank you, Mary. I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. Uh, discussion or questions? I have a question, Alan, but it's sure. probably not fair to you because nobody's here from the high school, but um, I, there's an awful lot of blank spaces <coughs> in the high school. Yeah. And, and what my understanding is, where there are blank spaces, and I'm sure Troy doesn't know here because Troy just got back. Oh, there's Troy. I'm yeah. sorry. I he, thought <laughs> he just got back here, so I don't even know if he's looked at these yet. Yeah. But there are blank spaces of people that we have he has not filled yet. Yeah, I, I certainly hope that you know because he doesn't have to twist too many arms to be advisors and SSTers and all of that. 
Okay. Well, although if I could go on with, that, with yeah. your question. On the high school one, mm. on the page that starts with Dick Mullen at the top, and I'm talking about the charts now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, if you go down, you'll see Larry Allen is music director for musicals. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry has done that in the past. He does it every other year. And so this is the year he'll be doing that. So where it says new position and new hire, those are both uh, not a new position. It's not a new hire. I will tell you that Larry is also a candidate for a one-fifth choral position at the high school. Mm -hmm. But I'm going through the process right now of getting all of his documentation in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So it, I didn't bring it tonight for you to look at. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted you to be aware. And the other one is Gretchen McNulty, who is two down from there, where it's World Affairs Council Model UN. Mm -hmm. It says under funding, extracurricular dues and fees account. Uh, that apparently was the way it was last year. This year it is paid for out of the budget. That was budgeted when we did oh, okay. budget for this year. So that should say school. So it should say school. Okay. And I think those, yeah, those are the only changes that I do have. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, may I have a motion, please? I think I already made one. Oh, I'm Did sorry. You? All those in favor. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Six to zero. Thank okay. you. Okay, consideration to approve a request by middle school teacher Elizabeth Johnson for an extended leave of absence for the 2010-2011 school year. And you have her letter in your packet, and Elizabeth does teach at the middle school. She's a very highly respected teacher at the middle school. She's expecting a baby, her first baby, and she's expecting that baby on October 9th. Uh, she, interestingly, is requesting a leave from October 4th until February 18th. <laughs> She's thrilled to be having the baby, but she also is going to miss her classroom. She does a wonderful job there. Uh, so that what she would plan to return to school following February vacation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hart. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I move that we accept um, the extended maternity leave for Elizabeth Johnston. Is there a second for the 2010-2011 school year? Second. second. Thank you, John. Questions, comments? All those in favor? <coughs> Consideration to approve the adjustments to the 2009-2010 school budget. And you'll remember uh, Pauline went over that when you did the finance report. It is the page that says at the, pot, at the top, a summary of general operating budget. And the change is the $178,000 which is coming out of regular instruction totals and moved to special education instruction uh, in order to balance that budget. Okay, is there a motion? I move to accept the um, school department's general operating budget for 2010. Adjustments. 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 To, yeah. Yeah. to the, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Questions or comments? Um, I will just say that this is a result of um, some expenses that we had been tracking last year mm -hmm. related to legal and out of district, and, and this is required um, to, uh, for our accounting purposes. All those in favor? 6 0. Okay, item F is consideration to hear from the superintendent regarding his retirement plan and initiate the options. I think you have E first. E. Oh, Kathy, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Consideration to appoint Kathy Ray as school board representative to the Cape Elizabeth Schools Emergency Preparedness Committee. Is there a motion? I move that we appoint Kathy Ray as the school board representative to the Cape Elizabeth Schools Emergency Preparedness Committee. Is there a second? second. Thank you, John. Thank you, Kathy. Thank, Thank you, Kathy. You, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't voted yet. <laughs> oh, I think we have. All those in favor? As soon as I read your email, I voted yes. <laughs> Thank you. You voted in favor of it. Yes. <laughs> okay. At this consideration to hear from the superintendent regarding his retirement plan and initiate the actions required by the school board. Okay. What I would like to do is read you a letter. It's an official letter that uh, I feel is the appropriate way to do this. It's dated October 24th, 2010, which is today. <laughs> it is to uh, Dear Chair Harrison Millett and school board members. I'm writing to inform you that I intend to retire as the superintendent of schools for Cape Elizabeth, effective December 31st, 2010. I have worked in the education field for over 40 years. 
In that time, although there have been many changes in education, in students, in families, and in communities, the educational needs of students have remained consistent. In order for a school system to be a true success, the teachers, administrators, and the community must focus on the academic, social, and emotional needs of each student. I believe it is a telling sign of the success of the collaboration efforts of our community that the Cape Elizabeth schools have worked together to develop the necessary knowledge, skills, behaviors, and attitudes to help our students become successful individuals and 21st century citizens. That work has included, amongst other things, developing a strong comprehensive curriculum, instruction, and assessment system to meet individual student needs. Creating an effective emergency preparedness plan for the safety for the entire school community. Writing job descriptions that clearly define the role of each staff member. Clarifying the expectations of each co-curricular program. Developing budgets that align with the educational, social, and emotional needs of our students. Designing a truly K through 12 system that articulates educational opportunities in a sequential manner. And providing a support system that enhances learning opportunities for all students in Cape Elizabeth. It has certainly been an honor and a privilege to serve as a superintendent for the last five years. Although each job I have held has left me with its own special memories, I especially cherish my experience here in Cape Elizabeth. I have been so very fortunate to work with a terrific group of people who, despite tough economic times, strive to breathe life into our mission and our vision statement. Particularly the teachers who, on a day in and day out basis, provide our students with the finest education possible. The educational technicians who work to strengthen the daily learning process. Administrators who make every effort to provide success and ex excellence in teaching and in learning. A community that cherishes education. Public officials such as yourself who sacrifice your time and efforts to ensure that our educational system flourishes. And of course, the other staff members who make all of the above possible. And I will just add in that when I talk about that, it is the technology people, it is the uh, drive bus drivers, it is the uh, cooks in the kitchens, and all of those people who make this all possible. My career has been one of great joy, constant reflection, continuing research into the best teaching practices of the time, and my own internal drive to do what is best for students. Though the decision is a difficult one for me, the time has come to retire from my current role as a superintendent. It is done with great pride and humility at the opportunity of working collaborative, collaboratively with so many in our community. Despite my plans to retire as a superintendent, I don't plan to walk away from the educational field or from Cape Elizabeth at this point. I would be happy to stay on as a consultant through April 15, 2011 to assist in the transition to a new superintendent and to work on the curriculum, instruction, and assessment, and also on the emergency plan. Again, I thank you for the privilege of working with all of you, and uh, I signed it with my name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, and we have a motion, and then we can have um, discussion or comments. Okay. okay, so may I have a motion, please? Um, I move to accept the resignation of Superintendent Hawkins, effective December 31st, 2010, with deep gratitude for his dedicated service to the Cape Elizabeth School Department. To accept his offer to provide consulting services through April 15, 2011, and to authorize the payment of his accumulated unused vacation days. Thank you, Mary. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Kate. Comments? Questions? I'll go. I wrote down what I wanted to say because I knew I wouldn't be able to remember all of it. Um, and I will try to get through it. <laughs> um, it is with great sadness <clears throat> Excuse me. that I very reluctantly accept the retirement of Alan Hawkins as superintendent of the Cape Elizabeth School System. Alan has served the Cape Schools for five years with dedication and professionalism that is unparalleled in my seven years on the school board. 
Alan always puts students first. When Alan first came to the Cape schools, there were many challenges before him. Job descriptions that needed to be written, including co-curricular co job descriptions that define the purpose of the groups, expectations, and results. Performance parameters that needed to be put in place and performance appraisals that needed to be communicated. From my experience in management, these are hard things to accomplish as they take time and are sometimes not well received by employees. I have been very impressed that Alan has the strong leadership skills to be able to accomplish these things and improve the quality of staff that the schools now enjoy. He has been instru instrumental in hiring superior teachers as long experienced teachers have left the system. I'm sure that employees who have been put on a performance plan would not necessarily share my opinion. Alan has been very supportive of his district leadership team, while at the same time having high expectations of their performance. He supports their growth in taking leadership roles above and beyond their departments. Some of the other accomplishments I attribute to Alan are, one, a move from the local assessment system to a coordinated curriculum grades K through 12. Although this will always be an ongoing project with various adjustments, prior to Alan's arrival, there was little, if any, coordinated curriculum. Because we now have a coordinated K through 12 curriculum, we have a program in place for collaboration between administrators with staff to coordinate instruction between schools, including instructional support or special education. This gets to the needs of identified instructional support or special ed students. A comprehensive emergency preparedness plan that meets federal, state, and local expectations. The Cape School parents can be confident that their children will be well cared for in the event of an emergency, thanks to the work of Alan, his staff, and his Emergency Preparedness Committee. Alan and Dominic DePatsy have spent a great deal of time putting together a report on how the school system operates for the state, which should have happened years ago with our prior superintendent. It's in Alan's office for review by the state or any inter interested individuals. One of the items that came out of this report is that we lacked a gifted and talented program which had been required of schools as of the late 1990s. We now have a gifted and talented program thanks to Alan and Dom. Alan and Dom have worked closely with administrators to develop the RTI model in the schools to more clearly define student needs and programming to meet those needs. Policies. When I was elected to the school board, we had a policy manual that had not been reviewed in years and was ineffective. Alan, along with the policy committee and board, has brought the school policies up to date with realistic policies that focus on good management processing. Guidance. Alan, along with the guidance department, have developed a comprehensive guidance plan, K through 12, that reflects national and state guidelines while changing to meet the needs of Cape Elizabeth students. Food service. We now have a food service director, Peter Esposito, who has moved the food service program ahead in two ways improved the quality of the food and brought the program to a break-even status, which had not been for many years prior. Facilities. Alan has recently hired a new facilities manager, Greg Marles, which better addresses the needs of the buildings and, allowed, and allows Janet Hoskins to redirect her focus on community services. Janet has done a tremendous job balancing multiple priorities. Budget. With difficult budgets, Alan continued to manage his staff development plan that, though not as financially complete, does support staff in the staff development process. Alan worked extensively with Paulina Portrier to put a budget together that was both supportive of the schools and responsible to the voters. Pauline, as we all know, is the backbone of the financial department for the town. I remember going to Alan in the past to ask him about teacher leaders. I did not understand the concept and had heard some criticism from the community about these positions as being frivolous. Whenever I heard concerns around the community, I felt as an elected official, I should investigate and find out all the details prior to jumping to any conclusions. As I had learned in my past, there is always another side to every story, and it doesn't pay to overreact when hearing bits and pieces of an issue. Alan explained to me that teacher leaders were important, as they helped to train and improve teacher performance, thus improving learning opportunities for all our children. Teacher leaders now make sense to me. Athletic director, when Keith Weatherby decided to retire, Alan worked with Jeff Shedd and Troy Henninger, searching for and finding a terrific new athletic director in Jeff Thorak. Jeff has bolstered the athletic program while keeping in mind the cost of maintaining a competitive and educational program that all students can benefit from. Special services. I was on the board when Alan hired a new strong leader in Dominic DePatsy to head up our special ed special services program. 
In my estimation, there were a lot of changes that needed to happen in that department to bring our student services to what they needed to be. Staff changes, program changes, higher expectations of employees, new in-house programs to meet identified student needs, including the Choices Program and an overall better co coordination of services to children. It has not been an easy transition and change is often hard. I do believe we are providing much better services to a larger number of students for a more cost-effective bottom line for taxpayers. Contract negotiations. Having worked extensively over the past seven years on contract negotiations, I can say that Alan brings an understanding of all points of view in the negotiations based on his many years of experience, and these skills allowed for better, better collaboration between the various parties to arrive at a mutually agreed upon plan that both could live with. Recognizing that a seven-member board can have varying opinions, mine is as follows. I am a native of Cape Elizabeth. As an elected official, I feel it is my duty to represent all of the voters of Cape Elizabeth, and I do not re represent any special interest groups. Cape Elizabeth was an excellent public school when I attended and is a better school system thanks to Alan Hawkins. I believe Alan's retirement is a huge loss for the Cape Elizabeth school system, and I'm very sorry to see him go. Thank you. I, too, put together a few words and needed to write it down to make sure that, first of all, that I got through it. And tonight, it is with mixed emotions that I sit here, prepared to accept your formal notice of your retirement. And when you accepted your superintendency here in Cape Elizabeth back in 2005, I know that you brought with you more than 40 years' experience in the field of education, both from a teaching and an administrative perspective. And since joining our school district here as its leader, you have demonstrated your passion for public education, your commitment to excellence in teaching, your belief in the importance of professional development, your skills in mentoring and developing people, and you're truly an advocate for the mission and vision of the Cape Elizabeth School District. You began your tenure with a comprehensive assessment of the district's fundamental building blocks and developed a systematic plan to build a solid foundation for our district. Some of the accomplishments resulting from that assessment was a comprehensive review, revision, and implementation of job descriptions at every staffing level, including those for teachers, administrators, support staff, as well as extracurricular staff. You impl implemented um, a system of interview and hiring practices to attract and retrain retain the most qualified teachers and staff. You've developed a stronger evaluation system for both staff and administrators. You've provided leadership in developing a plan to construct a comprehensive K through 12 curriculum. You've implemented an assessment system to track student progress. You've also began, you be, began to develop a long range plan to address programming and services targeted at meeting the needs of all students. You've also, as Kathy mentioned previously, gone through with the revision and the updating of the system-wide policies. This list by no means encompasses all of your accomplishments. Your dedication and integrity stretches well beyond the scope of my comments here tonight. Alan, you've also had your fair share of challenges. One of the, great, one of the greatest of these has been in the area of the budgeting. I can say, however, that under your leadership, we've become more disciplined financial managers and more strategic thinkers as we consider what drives our costs and the importance of preserving the student experience as we look to lowering our spending. On a more personal level, I want to express my sincere gratitude for your patience and understanding. I've served on the board for almost five years, and working with you, Alan, has been the highlight of my board experience. I've learned so much from you. It's obvious that education is your life's blood. And though your position has removed you from the classroom, you continue to share your gift of teaching with all of us. Some of the things that you've taught me is how to think about educational issues, the importance of process in decision making, the power of strong working relationships, and how to engage in difficult conversations 
much more productively. In closing, I want to express my appreciation for your service to the students, staff, and most importantly, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. I know that whatever you do, you will continue to be successful, and I shall deeply miss you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Other board members? Thank you. Um, I um, didn't prepare a statement. I wasn't prepared to. I, I assumed that we would have an opportunity in December to um, have a chance to thank Alan um, formally, but um, I want to thank Kathy and Linda for um, for outlining all of the things that Alan has done for the district. Um, and um, thank you, Alan, for your um, generous offer to consult beyond and to finish the CIA work. I think your work with curriculum, um, I think you'd have to be in the system to really understand what Alan has done for curriculum um, for this school and what that means to the system as a whole, how, how it has strengthened our, um, our whole K through 12 program. And so I'm glad to see that, that um, we'll be working to finish that up. Wish you all the best. Thank and, you very much. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Alan, um, Kathy and Linda and Mary, Mary, Kathy and Linda especially, <laughs> <laughs> eloquently um, for the last five years of your work here. I can speak to my one year uh, the joy of my one year of being able to have you um, open and available to answer all my questions. And it's uh, put me at ease with my four kids in the school. And one uh, piece I'm very, oh, I'm just so happy to be able to pass this on to them and as well as friends and, you know, as I chat away. Um, you need to be able to work with you know, I believe the kids would stay in their classroom and work through issues with their teachers because we have amazing teachers because of the processes you've put in and that the curriculum that's in the classrooms is thought out, meticulous um, curriculum and that the best thing I can tell my kids is, and it's summer now, go to school. <laughs> Be in the classroom, learn everything, and um, thank you for providing that. It's um, it it's me it meant a lot for me, and, and especially the the year I've had with you. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. Um, well, I've also only had a <laughs> short opportunity to, to work with you, Alan, but. Um, but what strikes me more than anything is your um, your commitment to students, um, which is um, without bounds, and um, and um, and and uh, it exceeds only slightly your your commitment to to teachers and the work that they're doing, and and then uh, that dedication is clear from the from the from the, um, the passion that you put into the, the work that you've done and and, um, and and the hours that you put into it. Um, and uh, it's it's been an inspiration to me in, 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 in my short service um, to see uh, your your dedication to the to the district and particularly as I said students and teachers. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> um, quite a bit has been said, so I, I, Alan I was there at the very beginning, and, and um, I know that you continue to carry with you your passion for the kids. That's what struck me at the beginning, and it struck me throughout this whole time, and I know that um, the kids will continue to benefit from your passion, and I'll be very um, excited to hear what you continue to do for the state of Maine in education. Um, and I too want to thank you for uh, agreeing to help us through this transition. Um, it's a very gracious offer and I wish you all the best. And I'm sure in December, as Mary said, that that's when I think that we will officially um, 
more adequately, at least on my part, mark this occasion. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have to take the vote now if that's okay with the board. All those in favor? Six zero. Okay. I don't believe there are any committee reports. It's been the summer, so we'll move on to uh, public comment on non-agenda items. Okay. Are there any school board agenda requests? Uh, announcements of upcoming meetings. I actually do not have any of that information for me, but I do, we do have another board meeting, business meeting, uh, second Tuesday in September. September 9th. Oh, September, September 9th. It's September 9th. I think it's the 8th. Is it the 8th? I think it's the 8th. Okay. It's the second Tuesday oh, in September. It's my sister's birthday is the 9th. That's why I thought of that. September 8th. Uh, may I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Thank you, Kathy. Second. Sir. Thank you, Linda. All those in favor? Sister. Yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you both for your time.